took a cruise tour from British Columbia, Canada to Alaska with Holland America Line. Beginning in Vancouver, we spent seven days traveling to the Yukon, Denali National Park, Fairbanks, and Anchorage. This is what you can expect to see and do on land before or after your Alaskan cruise. We stayed at the Fairmont Vancouver Airport before flying out to our first stop, Dawson City in the Yukon Territories. You can book tours to see Vancouver's highlights, so make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video for the best things to do in Vancouver before or after your Alaskan cruise. Land cruise tours can cost as low as $2,500 for shorter trips, but our 14-day Yukon Denali tour was pricier because it involved two flights, two train rides, and one day on the bus while staying at higher-end accommodations. The flights helped us spend more time sightseeing and less time on the bus, so it was worth it. You are constantly on the move during the land tour, covering a lot of ground, so be prepared for a jam-packed week of fun. It was busy, but worth it. Plus, once we finished up and boarded the ship, we had seven glorious days of relaxation and pampering ahead. Welcome to Dawson City. Dawson City is a town located on the Yukon River in the Yukon Territories of Canada. There are several excursions to choose from, but make sure you get out to the Midnight Dome to experience the Midnight Sun. We are at the Midnight Dome, just above Dawson City. It offers an awesome panoramic view. In the summertime, Dawson City sees nearly 24 hours of sunshine, so you can make the most of your time in town. It's the land of the Midnight Sun. What else is really cool about this particular town is that it sort of kept all the look, all the facades of what it was like back in that gold rush era. So when you're walking around uh, all the streets here, you sort of feel like you're back in time. We're at Claim 33 and we're going to do some gold pet. Dawson City was the heart of the Klondike gold rush in 1896 and a gold mining tour is a fun way to learn about history and to try your hand at panning for gold. I'm rich. How many flecks of gold do you have? I got six flecks of gold. Might need a little bit more though to get rich. Ladies and gentlemen, I am a certified gold panner. So we're here at Diamond Tooth Gertie's in Dawson City, and it is Canada's first casino. And let me tell you, you really feel like you've stepped back into the gold mining days here. They have daily can-can shows, you can go in and gamble your time away. You really, really feel like you're back in the old west. Cheers to the toe. One of the most iconic things to do in Dawson City is to try the Sour Toe Cocktail. It's a shot of spirits with a real dead human toe in it. It's actually a rite of passage dating back to 1973 when Captain Dick Stevenson found an amputated toe in a jar of alcohol. He decided to serve the toe in a glass of Yukon Jack where the toe has to touch your lips to become a member of the Sour Toe Cocktail Club. I was just touched by a dead toe, right there. Doing the Sour Toe Cocktail is very legendary here. Stuff that you have to do when you come up here to the Yukon. And we just knocked another one off the list, the Sour Toe Cocktail. Admire the facades of Dawson City that take you back to the Old West. Dawson City is a designated National Historic Site. It has restored many of its original structures and facades to recreate the buildings from 1896. The facades themselves were created during the gold rush to create the illusion of grandeur and importance in front of simple log buildings and also to leave room for advertising. It's a quick and easy yet very interesting tour around town. Another excursion you must book is to drive up to the Dempster Highway to enjoy the Tombstone Mountains 
and the only road in Canada to cross the Arctic Circle, continuing all the way to the Arctic Ocean. You won't get that far on this trip, but at least you'll get to experience this unique highway. The next portion of our land tour took us by flight to Fairbanks, Alaska, where we popped into Santa Claus House at the North Pole. Naturally, Santa's house has his reindeer, and they're right here relaxing for the summertime. After catching up on a bit of Christmas shopping, we then made our way to see Alaska's pipeline and learn about its gold mining history. This interactive tour took us by train to Gold Dredge Number 8 to see the process of mining and panning for gold before trying it ourselves. All right. Woohoo! That's not bad. Right. Not bad. Don't have a career in panning for gold, I gotta say. After spending some time in the Gold Mining Museum and checking out a bit of Fairbanks, we then transferred by bus to the star attraction of our land tour, Denali National Park. Welcome to Denali. Denali National Park is the third largest national park in America and is home to the highest peak in North America. It also has some of the most spectacular wildlife encounters in Alaska. Well, right behind me is Denali and we are so lucky because only 30% of the people who come to Denali actually see it. And we are having a crystal clear day today. Let's hope the wildlife watching is just as good. So the only way into Denali National Park is on the school buses. Uh, there is a lottery every year where you can get maybe a permit to come in. Um, you can come in about 20 miles to do some camping. Other than that, there's no motorized vehicles except for these uh, buses. Everyone else has to be on bicycles or come in and do some hiking. So uh, it's pretty cool because it keeps the traffic down when you think about it. This is one of the most visited parks in the United States. Private vehicles can drive 15 miles into the park, or visitors can take transit buses to have the flexibility to get out and hike in Denali. But we decided to do a narrated tour all the way to mile 43 with a naturalist who pointed out wildlife that we probably wouldn't have seen on our own. If there's one place to book a scenic flight on this land tour, it is at Denali. We took a flight to see the peak of Denali and the views were simply awe-inspiring. You actually feel as if you could reach out and touch the majestic mountain. This can be one of the more expensive excursions, but this is a bucket list trip after all, so it's worth it. The 60 minute flight can be a little intimidating, but the views are worth it. This flight really gives you an appreciation of the sheer size of the Denali Massif. We stayed at the McKinley Chalet Resort with the Holland America Line, and it was just two miles from the park entrance. The renovated chalets were pure relaxation with gorgeous views of the mountains and valley. Plus, there was great entertainment, dining, and the picturesque grounds were a perfect place to relax when not exploring the park. So when you do the land tour on a Holland America cruise, make sure that you get the dinner package. We've had all of our breakfasts and dinners included. I have these meal vouchers, and it includes a gratuity your starters, your main meal, and your dessert. And then you can buy your alcoholic beverages on top of that or order some just water, Coca-Cola, coffee, anything you want. It's a great way to go. From Denali, we hopped aboard the McKinley Express of the Alaska Railroad. This dome train is about an eight hour trip to Anchorage with full service, commentary, lunch and drinks to help you pass the time as you take in the gorgeous Alaskan scenery. It's a great time on the train and you're fed breakfast, snacks and drinks. 
Cheers. <laughs>
Well, there are a lot of different ways to get around Vancouver. You've got the hop on, hop off bus, you have the shared bike programs, you have public transit and the SkyTrain, and you have these great aqua buses, little ferries that take you across from Granville Island to other parts of the city. A land tour of Alaska really is a bucket list adventure to add to your Alaskan cruise. It immerses you in the northern culture, lets you see untouched landscape, and lets you step back in time to the Wild West days of the Alaskan Gold Rush. From mountains to glaciers and everywhere in between, the sky's the limit in the Yukon Territories and the interior of Alaska. <laughs> 